Let's take a look at what it means to turn a frequency into a relative frequency by looking at the age at Oscar data. Notice that we have all the categories defined here and how many actors were in each category. This 15 on the category that goes from 35 to 40 will correspond to the height of that age category on our histogram. So how do we turn this frequency histogram into a relative frequency histogram? Well first we have to change the frequencies into the fraction of times that they occurred. So that means we need to get a total number of times that they occurred. If we add up all the actors in the data set, we add up all these numbers, we're going to get 76. Now we can do our calculation. Let's stick with this same category. that is age range including 35 up to but not including age 40. If we pull a little calculator up here, we can take 15, which is the frequency for that category, divided by the total number of actors, which is 76. And we get that that equals 0.197. Therefore, which if we round it is 0.2, which corresponds to 20%. And 0.2 is what's in our relative frequency chart here. So a relative frequency is just the proportion or fraction of times a value occurs. Changing frequencies to relative frequencies retains the shape of the distribution. Let's compare our frequency histogram with our relative frequency histogram. The frequency histogram is on the left and the relative frequency histogram is on the right. What's the same across these two displays? Well, the shape of the distribution is exactly the same. What's different? Frequencies on the vertical axis of the frequency histogram and relative frequencies on the other. So only the scale changed. We mentioned that the shapes of the histograms, the relative frequency and the frequency histograms, were the same in the previous example. What do we mean when we talk about shape of a distribution? We have three terms that we're going to learn this semester to give us a basic idea of how to talk about the shape of a distribution. A distribution is symmetric if the right and left sides of the histogram are approximately mirror images of each other. We say that a distribution is skewed to the right if the right tail extends much further out than the left tail of the distribution. And it's skewed to the left if the left tail extends much farther out than the right tail. So the skew goes in the direction of the tail. Let's do an example together so you understand what we mean when we're talking about the tail. What is the distribution? What is the shape of the distribution pictured here? Well, if I could picture a smooth curve overlaid on this, and I could picture maybe an animal like a dinosaur or whatever, the tail would definitely be here on the right hand side of the picture. Since the right tail is longer, we're going to call this a skewed right distribution. We're going to use are new terms to describe shape of a distribution when we're talking about the overall pattern of a distribution. When we discuss the overall pattern, we want to discuss the shape, the center, and the spread. 
We have a definition. An outlier in a graph is an individual observation that falls outside the overall pattern of the data. We must do a calculation before we declare an extreme observation is exactly an outlier. We'll do that in Chapter 12. This can either indicate a truly extreme observation, or maybe it was a mistake. So you need to explore the nature of possible outliers. Was it a mistake, or does this distribution produce extreme observations sometimes? Let's use our knowledge so far to describe the overall pattern of the distribution of residents age 65 and older. Notice that the histogram has the percent of residents age 65 and over on the horizontal axis and the number of states with those percents on the vertical axis. So how do we interpret one of the bars on this histogram? Let's just pick one here so you can make sure you're, we're on the same page. Let's pick this bar right here. This means the height is roughly 6. You can see that it corresponds to 6 over here. So this means that approximately 6 states had between 11 and 12 percent of their residents age 65 and older. So now let's describe this distribution by its overall pattern. So we need to talk about shape, center, and spread. So we would say that the shape is roughly symmetric if we ignore the possible outlier. If we got rid of this one right here, the rest of that distribution looks roughly symmetric. In practice, we don't ever have really pretty, completely symmetric distributions. We just want to know if we notice an obvious skew or other deviation in our data. Now we have to talk about center and spread. Where is this distribution centered around? Well, it looks like somewhere between 12 and 14 percent. So, I would say the center of this distribution is roughly 16, or 13. And how about spread? We don't really have any tools in our toolkit yet to talk about how spread out these data are, these observations are. So we'll just use our gut. The total spread ranges from about 6 up to 17 percent. ranges from 6 to 17. And that's a basic idea, a rough idea, of how we talk about the overall pattern of a distribution. The main thing that we want you to know at this point is that you need to discuss in some way the shape, the center, and the spread. All three of those components need to be in your discussion. The last graphical display we're going to talk about is the stem plot. This is another plot for quantitative data, and it's very similar to a histogram, but instead of just bars for the data, the individual values are maintained. It's like a histogram turned on the side. The stem plot below illustrates the same da data set we were talking about just a moment ago. Notice that if we turned it on its side, if we rotated it to the left one time, it would have the same exact shape as the histogram we just looked at. So how do you create a stem plot? You separate each observation into a stem, all but the final digits, and the leaf, all the final digits. So the stems are over here to the left of this vertical line, and the leaves are all to the right of the vertical line. We write the leaves in increasing numerical order in row next to the appropriate stem. So let's take a look at this example stem plot for the residents age 65 and older data again. Notice that in the histogram that we just looked at, there was a bin that we called a possible outlier, and it was in the 6 to 7 range. Well, that's this observation right here. Now we understand how to label the stem plot. 
we've left the key off on purpose so that you could think about how to label your key and why it's important. If we just left our stem plot like this, nobody would know whether we were talking about 68% or different units. 68 pounds, who knows what we're talking about here. Maybe there might be a decimal place, 6.8. In this case, we know from our previous example that this bin was somewhere between 6 and 7 percent. So now we know that this must be 6.8. The vertical bar on this stem plot must mean that a decimal place goes there. So we can write a key now so that other people understand what our data is. We can say 6 bar 8 means 6.8 percent. Notice there's not a zero above the 7. If we put a zero there, like this, that would mean we had a state that had 7.0 percent of its residents age 65 and older. And we don't have that. We don't have any states that fell into the sevens range in the percentages. Therefore, we just leave a placeholder. It's important to leave those placeholders, just like we did in the histogram, so that we can get a good feel for the shape of the distribution and understand whether we have any possible outliers or not. Notice, with the stem plot, just like with the histogram, we can determine or estimate the shape, the center, and the spread of the distribution. Some notes about stem plots. You should never put any punctuation in your stem plot. They should not contain any punctuation. No commas, no decimal points, or other punctuation. This should be handled in the key. Leave a space holder if there is no leaf for a stem that is within your data. This was the case with our 7 bar nothing, where we didn't have an observation in the sevenths. We left a space holder. The leaves should be lined up on top of each other in straight columns so we can determine the shape of the distribution, just like is done in our example stem plot. Stem plots are a simple way to deliver a lot of detailed information.